this video, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of the spline functions in Data Curve Fit Creator Add-in. In particular, I'm going to show the Bessel spline and the one-way spline. The Bessel spline is similar to a cubic spline, except it uses a different method for calculating uh, the interpolation. The cubic spline uses a third-order polynomial fit internally to do its interpolation, and the Bessel spline uh, is using a parabolic fit. In some cases, depending on your data, you might get better results uh, in some data sets with the Bessel spline, so it's definitely good to have that option. The one-way spline is a monotonic spline, and uh, I'm going to show you both of those here. So I've got some sample data set up, uh, input values 1 to 8 and corresponding output values. And uh, in order to see what, the what happens in the interpolation, I've got some uh, test input values set up going from 1 to 8, going in, in uh, increments of 0 0.1, so we can see what uh, values are interpolated in between these data points. Um, so to start off, I'm going to try just the cubic spline, so to sort of to see what that does. Uh, so I say equals, and I go to the function wizard. Now, I pick the user-defined uh, category of the function wizard, because that's where the functions are from data curve fit creator add-in. I choose cubic spline. Now it takes three arguments as inputs, the source x, so I'll choose that there. And notice I'll hit F4 in order to make the uh, make that an absolute reference. It just adds do the dollar signs in there to make it an absolute reference. Now I'm going to choose the source y values, again making it an absolute reference, and then the first of our values are input uh, x values. I say OK and we've got uh, the first value. Uh, now if I double click on the corner here that will copy the formula down to the rest of the the rest of the points and uh, and we've got our our spline there. Now before the video started I set up a plot to plot out these source data values along with the uh, interpolated values that are calculated here. The, uh, the source data points are the are the blue dots here and the red line is the interpolated uh, spline. Now as you can see the spline that's produced, the cubic spline, it has some oscillations in there. I mean you probably don't want that uh, you probably don't want that in your interpolation and uh, that's just something that can happen in some cases with cubic splines. If you have data points that are close together and, and vary by a small amount, in order to force the curve to go through each point, which is what interpolation you know, splines do, it sometimes has to do these strange oscillations which, which you, you don't necessarily want. So the next thing that we're going to try is we're going to change over and try the new Bessel spline. So the Bessel spline takes the same arguments as the cubic spline, it just takes these, the input uh, sample data x and y values along with the new value that you want to calculate for. So I'm just going to change the name here and say OK, and now I've got uh, the Bessel spline here. And, and when I copy the values down, take a look at what happens to the curve, and you can see the difference between the cubic and the Bessel spline. So you see that the, using the Bessel spline cut down on those unwanted oscillations a lot. You still get some, but uh, it cut down on it a lot, and uh, it's, it's a good option to have uh, available to you. Next, I'm going to uh, change the uh, function used and go from using the Bessel spline to the one-way spline. And you can see what happens there. So now, as I copy the formula down, and, and it changes from the Bessel to the one-way spline, see what happens to the, to the fit. And you see that this really did remove the uh, oscillations, all of them. Now, as I said, the, the one-way spline is a monotonic spline. If you're source data is monotonic, that means if it's only increasing or only decreasing, then if you use the one-way spline, then your interpolated curve is only going to be monotonic as well. It's only going to be increasing or only decreasing the way that your sample data is. Um, and that can be very useful. That In, gen in, in general, the one-way spline will produce the tightest curve, the, the fewest of those unwanted oscillations. Um, you know, if your source data is not monotonic, you can still use the one-way spline uh, as well. So it, it, your source data doesn't have to be monotonic. So in the scale of sort of splines, the cubic spline generally produces the most uh, 
the smoothest functions, but they can produce, but it also can cause some of those unwanted oscillations. The uh, Bessel spline reduces the uh, those oscillations somewhat, but it's not quite as smooth as the, as the cubic spline. And the one-way spline produces probably the tightest uh, uh, curves, but uh, again, it kind of forces it to be tighter, and, and especially if you've got monotonic input data, it's forcing it to be monotonic. So, you know, which one is the best? Well, for different data sets, different ones can be better. Uh, you know, you might want to try out, if you've got monotonic data and you want monotonic results, use the one-way spline. Otherwise, you can try the cubic spline, and if you're having problems with that, you know, you can try the Bessel spline. You can try it out for different data, data sets, and uh, having, uh, having the option to, to switch between the cubic and the Bessel spline, I think, uh, is a good thing because it, it, if there are problems with one, then the other, uh, you know, can be, uh, you know, might solve those problems. So you can download, uh, you can download Data Curve Fit Creator Add-in from www.srs1software.com and try it out yourself. There's a 30-day fully functional trial, and uh, you know, we hope you like the software and you hope you find it useful. Thank you.